First Samuel chapter 25. And we're going to break this chapter in half because it's a wonderful chapter. We're not in a rush. Samuel died. And all the Israelites were gathered together and lamented him and buried him in his house at Ramah. Now, they didn't bury him. It's a property. This is the same thing with uh, Japheth. Whatsoever comes out of my house, I'm going to offer it. He had the last mind was his daughter. He thought an animal. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. David's still on the run. Now one of the friends, one of the allies of David has died, Samuel. He was a judge. He was a priest. <clears throat> there was a man in Maon whose possessions were in Carmel. Carmel means a full place or a park. It's a mountain. And the man was very great. And he had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. And he was shearing, the first time that word shows up, his sheep in Carmel. He's got his sheep, he's out there shaving them. Now the name of the man was Nabal, which means fool. And you'll see that come up later. Now remember, Nabal was not a name that before he was born, oh, we're going to name him Nabal. Jewish people would name the child after birth. And there would be something with that child that they would look at that child and say, Deborah. Deborah means be. Rachel means you, lamb. The parents named this child fool. So he's been a fool since childhood. Unless he's been given a surname. And the name of his wife, Abigail. I failed to look at that one. I meant to. And she was a woman of good understanding. How did she end up with this idiot? And a beautiful countenance. Her face was beautiful. They always say opposite attracts. And here we go in the Bible. But the man was churlish, the only time that word shows up, and evil in his doing. And he was of the house of Caleb. So, of good understanding, how did she end up with this guy? And then you say, well, I'm a righteous man, I do good, my children are going to do good. Well, we didn't see that with Samuel's children. We're not going to see it with David's children. And here Caleb, down, down through the line of Caleb, his great, 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 great grandchild, Nabal, a fool, is anything but like Caleb. And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did shear his sheep. Now remember, David was a shepherd. And David sent out ten men, number of Gentile, Ten young men. And David said unto the young men, Get you up to Carmel, see it's a mountain, and go to Nabal, and greet, first time that word shows up, him in my name. A type of Jesus Christ. We're going to look at some passages here. Mark 14, 13. Mark chapter 14. Verse 13, we're going to start seeing Jesus Christ in David. Greet him in my name, David. But well, we greet in the name of Jesus Christ. In Mark chapter 14, verse 13. Now here is two men. David sent ten men out. It's not, oh, a type does not always go 100%. And he sent forth two of his disciples. David sends two of his men. I mean, 10 of his men, which were under him. And says unto them, Go ye into the city, go ye into Carmel, and there shall meet you a man, there will be a man there, bearing a pitcher of water, follow him. 
And wheresoever he shall go, and say ye to the good man of the house, the master, pay attention to that word. The master saith, where is the guest chamber? For I shall eat the Passover with my disciples. He will show you a large upper room furnished, prepared. There make ready for us. And the disciples went forth and came into the city and found, as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. Now notice there's a meal. There is food. There is drink. David over here. David says, go find a man and greet in my name. I guarantee those disciples say, Jesus. And thus shall you say unto him that liveth in prosperity. That's the very great man of verse 2. The very great man is prosperity. He's got wealth. He's got wealth. He's got animals like Job. Job has more, by the way. Peace both to thee. Wasn't well, that something that Jesus said? Peace. And peace be thy house. And peace be unto all that thou hast. Luke 10, 5. Let's see about this one. With the disciples. Luke 10, 5. Out of the mouth of Jesus. David, type of Jesus Christ. And when we go scripture with scripture, Luke 10, 5. And into whatsoever house he entered, first say, Peace be to this house. And if the Son of Peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. And if not, it shall return to you again. It's going to return with them. Nabal's going to end up dead. So, I mean, we're not looking at word for word, but the, the situations do match Jesus Christ. Peace both to thee, peace be to thy, and that would be something that Jesus said, peace be unto all that thou hast. So David's not coming hostile. Here comes his armed men, military men, they approach this man, neighbor, hey, we're not coming for war, we're coming in peace. Good favor. Jesus said, I have not come to destroy, I'm come to save. <clears throat> now I have heard that thou hast shearers, First time that word shows up. Now thy shepherds which were with us. Now here's the story beforehand. While David is in this place, he is hanging out with the shepherds of Nabal. And we'll go into more with that. Which were with us, we hurt them not. We didn't do them no violence. Neither was there a missing. That, that is the first time and then the only other time that shows up is 1 Kings 20, verse 39. Missing. 1 Kings 20, verse 39. So what David said is, man, listen, we didn't steal any of your food. We didn't steal any of your men. We didn't steal any of your sheep. We didn't steal your water. What you have by the numbers, you still have. They're all missing unto them. All the while they were in Carmel. No one came and stole from them. Let's we'll see. Ask thy young men. They will show thee. Whether let the young men find favor in thy eyes. All right, go ask your men how well it went. Be a witness. For we come in a good day. Give, I pray thee, whatsoever cometh to thy hand. Unto thy servants and to thy son David. That's Nabal's not son of David. David's not a son of Nabal. Jesus Christ is the son. He says, We need provisions. And whatever you got on your hand, we'll take. We're not asking for a fee. Whatever you can spare. Like those men that went and found the man bearing the water pitcher. Where's the upper house so we can prepare the food? And when David's young men came, they spake to Nabal according to all those words, the name of David, Mark chapter 14, and ceased. So what's that? They said exactly what saw what David told them to say. Uh, 
that's our answer machine. That they said whatever David told them to say, and nothing more, and nothing less. And Nabal answered David's servants and said, Who is David? A lot of people don't know who Jesus is. Who is the son of Jesse? Well, I guess he did know who David was. For Jesus, that would be, who is Jesus? Who is the Son of God? There be many servants nowadays that break away, fled. And kind of way he's right with David. But David broke away when the javelin was thrown at him. David left when the javelin was thrown at him. David left when he, Jonathan said, listen, my father is so angry, he threw the javelin at me. <coughs> <clears throat> so David is on the run but he's got good cause every man from his master Mark chapter 14 the master has a need shall I oh, watch this I then take my bread and my water isn't that what the guy was carrying? A man be carrying a warring part? He's going to take you to an upper room? Didn't they have bread there? And my flesh, that would be meat. That would be meat of animals and meat also of, of uh, fruits and vegetables. That I have killed for my shearers. Listen, they're mine. They are for my shearers. They are for my workmen. They are for my shepherds. Who are you? Now, that's not what the man with the upper chamber did with Jesus. And give it unto men whom I know not whence they be. I don't know who you guys are. I don't want to know who you are. Get out of here. I'm not going to help you. So David's young men turned their way. This is not the disciples. Disciples went in and prepared the meal. And went again and came and told him all the, those things. And David said unto the men, Gird ye on every man his sword. Oh, okay, man, grab your swords. And they girded every man his sword. Look how beaten they are to David. And David also girded on his sword. That would have been Goliath's. If he hasn't changed it. And there went up after David about 400 men. And 200 bold by the stuff. So there's still the 600. But 400 goes with David and two stay at the camp. Cooking the meals, cleaning, washing the clothes, whatever the duties are when the soldiers take off. You've got to have some stay back in the back. Not everybody goes to the battle. But one of the young men told Abigail, and this would be Nabal's men, Nabal's wife. Saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master. And he railed on them. Now that rail means to make fun of the ridicule. Mark 15, 29. Always amazing how when you try to do the Bible, all the interruptions come out. Mark 15, 29. Let's look at it with, with this with, uh, with Jesus. They railed on David's men. But as far as Jesus. And get an understanding of the word. Mark 15, 29. It means insulting language. The insult. And they that passed by. Railed on him. Jesus. Wagging their heads. Uh, look, at, look at that. That's, that's God up there. Ha 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 ha. He can save others. He can't save himself. Come down off that cross. And one other place. Luke 23, 39. So now he told us, get out of here. We're not going to feed you. Man, he made fun of them. He ridiculed them. 23, 39. He made fun of them. 
Yeah, you vagabonds, you, you you run away from your your owners, you bunch of slaves, you bunch of servants who has no master. Get out of here. Who is that scum David? You better watch out. That scum David is the king. But God will take care of you. Numbers 23, 39. And one of the malefactors, one of the thieves on the cross, which was which were hanged railed on him. They're hanging on the cross. Ah, look at who you are. Ah, you think you're a king? You're up here. You're just as bad as we are. No, he's not. Ah, look at you. So Jesus is getting getting railed on from people that are on the cross. Because they both do it, then one repents. He's getting railed on, ridiculed, made fun of people that are on the ground. And this man that is called fool. It's railing on David's men. So what is that lost man on the cross that dies and goes to hell, not paradise? What is he? He's a navel. What is he? He's a fool. What are those people on the ground railing at Jesus, shaking their head? What are they? They're navels. What are they? They're a fool. What are people today when we preach the gospel, we go to their door with the gospel, we open the Bible with them about with the Bible, and about the gospel, about Jesus Christ, any way that you witness in a public ministry, you tell them about Jesus Christ, and they make fun of you. They call you a Bible thumper. They call you a Jesus freak. They call you an idiot. They call you, you don't know what you're doing. What are they? They're navels. They're fools. Aren't we servants of Jesus Christ? Aren't these men the servant of David? All they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Yea, marvel not that the world hates you. Know that it hated me first. We're not supposed to be pleasure in having a good time with the world. If our ministry is correct and if we're doing what the Bible tells us to do, the world ought to hate us. They hated Jesus. Something wrong with today's church. So they railed on him. But the men were very good unto us. Now, this is the servant of Nabal talking to Abigail. He's saying that David's men were good unto us. Now, this is a testimony. This is the good report of David and his men. And we were not hurt. They did us no harm. Neither miss we anything. We, nothing was stolen. Nothing was taken. There were no thieves among them. Well, a different story for Robin Hood. As long as we conversed, with them we talked with them we talked about our families we talked about the sheep remember this is david's men as far as shepherds david was a shepherd you know david would have a good time with these men he'd tell them about his sheep he let them tell about their sheep he probably tell them the story of the bear and the lion they probably told him this story how do you take care of your sheep what's the name of your sheep how do you call your sheep this is about my sheep i lay down and practice you know it, this was this was heaven on earth for David and these men. And his men were talked with Nabal's men, and Nabal's men were with David's men. With him, with when we were in the fields. They were a wall unto us both by night, night and day. And all the while we were with them, keeping the sheep, they were our protection. They protected us. They took care of us. Now, therefore, know and consider, talking to Abigail, what thou wilt do. For evil is determined against our master. I don't know how they knew that, but David's getting ready to come to town and kill. And against all his household. For he is such a son of Belial. And we've just discussed that before. Just a child of the devil, just pure wicked is this man how did he ever end up with abigail i don't even imagine maybe it was an arranged marriage that a man cannot speak to him in other words he won't listen he will not hear reasoning he's wicked then abigail made haste look look how quick she is like rebecca and took 200 loaves that's bread and two bottles of wine bread and wine where have you seen that where those two disciples went and prepared the meal there's the lord's supper isn't that interesting 
and five sheep ready dressed. However you fix deer, I mean deer, however you fix sheep for dinner. Five measures of parched corn, wheat and barley, and a hundred cluster of raisins. First time that word shows up. 200 cakes of fig and laid them on as knows that everything is healthy and great. Everything that an army needs to, to get refreshed. Everything that Nabal didn't give. And she said unto her servants, Go on before me. Behold, I'll come after you. But she told not her husband Nabal. And was so as she rode on the ass, that she came down by the cover, first time that shows up, of the hill. <clears throat> you know, there was a cover of a hill where Jesus grew up, and they were going to throw him off it. And behold, David and his men came down against her. That means, here she comes, here they come. And she met them. And David has said, surely in vain have I kept all that this fellow has in the wilderness. So that nothing was missed of all that pertains to him. We protected him. We did not give him a bill for the protection. We asked for nothing. But then when we did ask for something, man, he turned us away. We gave him worthy hire and he gave us no wages. That's against the law. The, the law of the Bible. So that nothing was missed of all that pertaineth unto the, him. And he has requited, he has requited me evil for good. Great. This is what he's given me. This is the payback. I have done him good. And he has done me evil. Well, that's his character. That's his nature. And we'll close with verse 22. Uh, not, but this is where we'll close. So... And more also do God unto the enemies of David. You know what, the, you know what God's going to do to the enemies of Jesus Christ? Cast them off in a lake of fire that burneth forever. If I leave of all that per, pertain to him by the morning, light, second advent. When Jesus Christ comes, he's going to deal with the enemies of Jesus himself. Any that pisseth against the wall. Brother Sally, you said a bad word. Do you think actually the Holy Spirit in 66 books that the Holy Spirit will cuss and name a word that has been perverted and you'll find piss in the Bible six times? Do you think that that word by the Holy Spirit is there? Do you think it would be a bad word? All it says, all it means is urinate. Urinate. It wasn't until 1945 that it, the term became used as anger. I'm off. So that would be a curse. And they'll say that this is for private reading here. It ought not to be. Listen, there are plenty of words that people say that are cusses that everyone hears. I'm a born again Bible believing Christian and I try to keep my conduct clean. But when you go out in the public streets, my daughter hears, my wife gets thrown at her, the four letter curses and the five letter curses, they're there. But you're not going to see the Holy Spirit cuss or curse. Now you're going to find the word bastard in the Bible. Oh, you see the word bastard. That means that he lived, he lived, yeah, I can't say, a child born out of wedlock. Now when you got a Bible that says SOB and no one says anything about that, I'm not even going to say that word. Now, Jesus will use not that word, but he used the terminology when he deals with a Gentile woman. All the Bible should be read. Any part of this Bible should be read, can be read. There's nothing perverted. There's nothing that is a curse or a cuss in the Bible. Words by God. 
Song of Solomon, I heard. Oh, that ought not to be ready. All that. It's filthy and dirty. It's a love between a man and a woman. You got a problem with a man, between a, a man and a woman, the love thereof? And that's probably a bad spot to end, but that's where we're going to end. And we'll pick up with the death of Naval. And we may break this into three sections. I don't know. But this is a wonderful story. I want to relate this to Abigail. She's married to a loser. And she's going to help David the winner. Abigail pitches the church. The church before it's saved is married to a loser, the devil. He's evil. He's wicked. He's beile. How'd you ever end up with that guy? How'd you ever end up in the family of Satan? Oh, I was born in it. And then she meets David. She brings all her works to David. Because she wants to do right, but our works can't save us. And then David's going to take her and he's going to marry her. And it'll be his bride. It's a wonderful story here. 